Onions 101. What makes different onions different? Why every recipe calls for an onion. How to cut them. Basic cooking. What recipes mean when they say translucent. All of that stuff. Anybody who says that you must use a specific color of onion for your recipe is probably somebody who has lost some perspective. They're all just onions. I mean, let's put the sweet onion and the shallot aside for a minute and look at the three basic colors of globe onion, allium sepa. There are differences between these, but not very big differences, especially when cooked. Aside from cosmetics, the main difference is their sulfur content. The more sulfur, the more pungent the onion. Yellow globe onions have the most sulfur, followed by white onions and then red onions. Red onions are usually usually the mildest. Let's taste them all raw. The red onion is already staining my hands and my knife. Be aware that these will introduce a noticeable purple color into light-colored dishes. Raw, it tastes crisp, moderately pungent, and sweet. Red onions usually have the most sugar. Between that and their pretty color, they are often used raw in salads and such. The white onion is the official onion of Mexican cooking. Raw, it is a little more pungent than the red onion, but it's also also satisfyingly juicy. White onions have more water than the other colors, and that makes them plump little flavor bombs to garnish strong flavored foods, like these asada tacos from Chapolinas in Alcoa, Tennessee. Not an ad, just a fan. The yellow onions really are noticeably more pungent than the others when raw, at least when eating a whole damn slice of raw onion, which nobody ever does, so this is probably an unrealistic test. Let's try eating them cooked. I'm leaving the skin on to just to help me remember which which is which. It's interesting how the red and the yellow slices start falling apart first. The white onion contains more water, so it cooks slower. We get more rapid browning on the yellow onion, though. Red onions have the most sugar, but yellow onions have the most reducing sugar. Reducing sugars are forms of sugar involved in the Maillard reaction, which is one of the browning reactions that makes food taste roasty toasty. Check how solid that white onion slice remains to the end. White onions hold up better on the grill. Let's taste these now. The red onion can feel a little fibrous compared to the others, but it's not a big difference. It is still noticeably sweeter than the others when cooked, but again, not a huge diff. The white onion is still juicier when cooked and a little more pungent, but cooking turns down the volume on onions a lot by breaking down those sulfur compounds. So even though the yellow onion still tastes the strongest when cooked, it's milder than the mildest raw onion in the world, and the differences between the colors of onion are especially minor when cooked. So the first thing almost every recipe has you do is to peel and cut an onion. How do you do that? Well, step one is to sharpen your knife if you've not done that lately. Cutting onions with a dull knife will shred the plant tissues more, and it sends sulfurous gas up into your eyes, making you cry. A sharp knife makes cleaner, quicker cuts, and I never cry when I'm using a sharp knife. Always remember to wipe off the metal shavings. So the onion. This is the stem end, where the stem used to come out, and down here is the root end. Notice that the grain of the onion moves from root to stem. The plant has fibers running in clear parallel lines. If you want whole slices or rings of onion, you have to slice against the grain, perpendicular to the grain. And if that's what you want, you have to make a really shallow slice just to penetrate the skin. Then you can get in there with your fingers and peel it all off. A whole onion like that, you can just roast in the oven for like an hour. It's delicious. Get rid of that dry bit of stem there, and then you can see those nice concentric circles. Those are layers of swollen leaves. From there, you could cut slices that you can roast or grill whole, or you can break the slices apart into rings. More often, though, a recipe will tell you to chop an onion, and the first thing you do there is cut it in half from root to stem. I like to anchor my knife on top, arch my hand around the knife to stabilize, and then cut straight down to the board. It's much easier to get your fingers in under that skin and peel it off now. If the outer layers of onion seem a little bit dry or like they're starting to decompose, you can just peel them off. Again, get rid of the dry stem end, and this is not how I chop an onion, but it is probably the easiest way if you're not super confident with your knife. Just cut straight down to the board parallel to the grain. Notice that I'm not cutting all the way down to the root end. I'm leaving the root end in 
intact to hold all the layers together for me while I work. Straight down all the way across. Watch your fingers at the end there. You don't have to do this part, but the pieces come out a little bit more even in size if you carefully cut through this away once or twice, but that part is not necessary. Then you just slice against the grain to release the individual pieces. Notice that I am slicing slowly forward and back while simultaneously pushing down. That makes a smoother cut, less crying. Get down to the root end and you can just get off the last little bits there and toss the root. This chop is okay, but notice the wide range in size of the pieces. This is because we've effectively sent a round thing through a square cutter, and so the geometries don't line up perfectly. You can get more even pieces by cutting the onion half radially, like this. The knife orbits around the center instead of cutting straight up and down. This is easy until you get past the top of the onion. Here now is just my personal technique that would be far too dangerous to do at professional onion cutting speeds, but I think it's it's fine for me at home where I only need to cut one onion, not 50. I actually re-grip the knife a little bit with my thumb and then I push forward with the knife away from my body. You gotta be careful to not come through and cut your stabilizing hand on the other side. You can try to keep your fingers on top of the onion to keep them safer. Find a way that works for you and just go slow. Gordon Ramsay is not breathing down your neck here. Now just cross cut and we're getting a more uniform chop that will look pretty and cook more evenly. Bigger pieces pieces about this size are called a chop. Make closer cuts for smaller pieces and you'll have a dice. Go even smaller and you've got a mince. Most recipes will now tell you to cook these in a little oil or other fat. Granted, I'm giving a very Western perspective on onions right now. In the Middle East, onions are often grated or pureed and used raw as a marinade. Basil, that is the Arabic word for onion. I learned that from Rosetta Stone, sponsor of this video. Marhaban means hi. 25 of the world's major languages are waiting for you to learn right now on Rosetta Stone. Do the lessons anytime on your computer or your mobile device, and I love how it replicates natural language learning by combining pictures and reading and hearing and speaking all together. You know how the first level of a good video game always kind of teaches you how to play the game as you're playing it? That's how Rosetta Stone feels. Everything you see and hear will be in your new language, but you'll figure it out. You'll figure out what's happening through context clues. Oh, the boy eats, right. There's phrase books for traveling, live lessons, stories, videos, all kinds of things. And the best part is that you can buy lifetime access to all Rosetta Stone languages. One payment, a lifetime of language learning for travel, for career, whatever. Get 60% off that unlimited package today with my link in the description. Thank you, Rosetta Stone. Anyway, once you've chopped your onions, most recipes tell you to drop them in a little hot oil. If your heat is on the low side and the onions do not sizzle real loud, nice and quiet like that. When you do that, you are sweating the onions. Sweating is what you do when you want to soften the onions and reduce their pungency while also avoiding any browned flavor or color. Good for mild dishes. Some people tell you to add salt to help draw moisture out of the pieces. I have tested that effect by comparing raw versus cooked weights, and the salt doesn't do anything noticeable. The cell-bursting power of heat is simply far stronger than the osmotic effect of the salt. Rest Recipes will often tell you to cook the onions until translucent. Does that look see-through to you? Well, it is more translucent than this raw piece, right? The onions will never be totally see-through, but when you notice that they're a little see-through, that's an indication that they're soft and mild enough to move on with whatever it is that you're cooking. If you want to saute instead of sweating, you want your oil real hot, just starting to smoke, and then the onions should sizzle loudly. If sweating took almost 10 minutes, sauteing is gonna take half that time. You just stir frequently to keep the bits on the bottom of the pan from burning black, which smells nasty. Starting to get some browning there, which is the goal this time, getting those sweet, roasty flavors. Why do recipes usually have you cook the onions before you put other things in the pan? Well, because onions usually need a head start. It's as simple as that. Without the head start, the onions in your stew or your sauce or whatever tend to be a little crunchy or slimy me, whereas with the head start, they just kind of melt away in a stew, and they provide a wide base of flavor, pungency, sweetness, umami, tastes and smells that really fill up the gaps in a dish. You notice when the onion is not there. Like, 
If you make a simple beef stew with no onions, it tends to taste a little like dog food rather than the people food that you're accustomed to. Onions are bad for dogs. Noticeably softened after five minutes, we are done. People might say that those are a little caramelized, but the dish that people call caramelized onions is a different thing that takes a lot more cooking. You could use any color onion for that, but the white ones have extra water, which will make this already very lengthy process take even longer. Caramelized onions are supposed to be sweet. Red onions are the sweetest, but their dark color can make it kind of hard to tell if they're burning when they're caramelized. Again, it doesn't matter that much, but the yellow is probably the best option, especially with its much higher content of reducing sugars. Have and peel, ditch the stem, and this time we can also ditch the root end. We don't need to keep the layers together because we are making making Frenched onions, little half moon slices. Slice with the grain and you can cut up and down, but again, you're gonna get more even pieces if you cut radially. Since we no longer have the root end to dance around, we can just rotate this when we get to the top and do the other side of the onion without awkwardly cutting away from ourselves. The only awkward part is that last cut there at the top. Watch your fingers. Break these apart and then you have pretty little slices with naturally tapered ends. If you instead slice your semicircles against the grain like this, you're still gonna be okay. I just don't think the pieces look quite as nice and when you cook them, their structure kind of collapses around those lines where the fibers run, and they feel especially floppy and slimy. Again, it probably doesn't matter much, I'm just showing you the difference. Let's caramelize the Frenched onions. Start with more than you think you want because they're going to cook down a lot. Most people tell you to do this over moderate heat. You can use high heat as long as you commit to stirring constantly. This will make the first phase of cooking go a lot faster. The water coming out of the pieces will keep them from burning as long as you keep everything moving. Still, once I see some deep browning like that, I might start lowering the heat a bit. If it's brown near the beginning of cooking, it might be burned by the time we're done because we're gonna have to cook these for like 20, 25 minutes and it'll take twice that long if you use lower heat. But with the lower heat, you don't have to stir as much. Either way is fine. About halfway through, you'll notice a residue on the bottom of the pan turning brown. Before that burns, we need to deglaze or release it with just a little bit of water, just enough to help you scrape the pan clean with a spoon, and wooden spoons are best for scraping. The water will evaporate right away and you can get back to slowly frying the onions. Repeat that water step as necessary as you go. We're looking for the onions to go jelly soft and deep amber. When they're almost done, you can cheat and give them a pinch of extra sugar, put it in earlier and it's liable to burn. Also a little butter is very nice. Also would have burned if we'd put it in earlier. And my very last deglazing I will do with a little splash of vinegar instead of water to brighten up the taste. Acid earlier would actually reinforce the pectin and slow the process of softening the plant tissue. So do the vinegar at the end. And that is a delicious thing to eat all on its own or on toast or on crostini. Caramelized onions are awesome on a cheese plate or on a pizza. It's just an S tier condiment or garnish and you can freeze them for later. All right, when I need dinner in five minutes, not 45, I reach for shallots. Shallots are more expensive, but they're smaller, which is nice because I usually don't need a whole globe onions worth. People say shallots taste a little like garlic, but I don't get that at all. They tend to grow in bunches that kind of look like garlic cloves, so maybe that's where people get the whole garlic thing. Shallots are a little milder than a globe onion, but the main reason I like them is that their layers are thinner, so the pieces are smaller. There's more surface area, and you can saute them soft in a minute or two. There's a reason lots of quick pan sauces begin exactly like this. But I use shallots for almost everything that people would normally use a globe onion for. What's the difference between green onions and scallions? Well, depending on who sold them to you, they are either the exact same thing or they are effectively the same thing. They can be different onion varieties, but they're all harvested young when the green stems are still tender and edible. We eat the whole thing instead of just the part down here where the bulb grows in the dirt. Ditch the roots and slice. The slices from down in the white ends are firmer and people usually cook those like any other onion pieces. When we get up into the greens, these these pieces you can treat more like a fresh herb and you throw them into the dish at the very last second. The green tips tend to be visibly dry and fibrous. Those go in the stock pot or the compost. 
If scallions are like baby onions, spring onions are teenager onions. A small globe, lots of edible stem, nice fresh flavor. Chives are a teeny tiny allium species where the stems look like blades of grass. Use those stems as a fresh herb. Leeks are some of the bigger alliums. These are awesome. They have a distinctive mild aroma. They're great for roasting, great for soup. The only problem is that you have to slice them in half first and clean out all the dirt between the layers. Just flush out the layers with running water. There can be dirt between the layers of a scallion too, but scallions are so little, you probably won't notice that much dirt. It's like how you only really have to devein the big shrimp. With tiny shrimp, you won't even notice the sand. All of the length of this leek will require heavy cooking to soften, and the dry tips you just get rid of. Oh, these yellow onions that grow really squat like this, these are called sweet onions. Not because they have more sugar, but because they have a lot less sulfur due to the variety and the soil conditions. They are super juicy like white onions, but very mild when raw, great on salads and sandwiches and such. Once you cut it, you probably do have to keep the leftover onion in the fridge, but otherwise you should avoid storing onions in the cold. Cold actually accelerates the breakdown or deactivation of some flavor compounds in the onions, and it accelerates the breakdown of vitamin C, which onions have a lot of, so no fridge if you can avoid it. Yes, you absolutely can just boil onions. I love the fresh flavor that you get when you don't brown them in oil first. Just let them break down in the seasoned water in a simple vegetable soup. One of my favorite things to eat in the whole world. Onions actually contain some mild thickening agents, so they've contributed to the silky texture of that broth. And the flavor just fills the senses in a way that few other foods do. That's why onions are in everything. Onions are flavor filler.